Uh, this is a message for the fools, the hypocrites, and the parasites. You are deceived. The deception at the moment is rife. Nobody, practically no one, knows the truth. And in fact, the vast majority are completely backward and wrong. So that means you have to be open-minded too, if you're watching this video, that you too might be completely backward. And yes, I would open my mind to that too, but as I'm the one making this video, I am the one with the truth. The deception is rife. To you atheists who don't believe there's a God, you are just idiots. You are completely in a facade, completely caught up with materialism and that day-to-day -day bullshit that's been going on. And you are the most wrong. Now, although God loves your soul, and your soul is just playing the part, the part that you're playing, the bit of you that is listening to this, because that's what you believe you are, God doesn't love. He's the opposite. You are, you are the, the end. And you're here to show what happens to a population when they feel they don't need God the Father and Mother. We're eternal beings. God has set up this world so that our eternal beings can experience something. And what we're experiencing right now is the result of being in the wrong for a long time. So it's going to be shitty. Now, to those who believe in God but profess that Jesus is the Word and the Son and worship Jesus and want to say, you know, to everyone, um, say that you, you know, love the Lord Jesus or, you, you know, whatever they say that you should say, is completely wrong too. I mean, who came up with the word Jesus, right? It wasn't even his name in his lifetime, it was Yeshua. Okay, and bear in mind that the majority are deceived. And you're giving this, you know, homage to a word, Jesus, and you don't even know what it means. Okay, so you think it's God. Most people think in their hearts it's God. But it's still wrong. And the truth is a foundation of love. So without the truth... You're gonna not have no, you're not gonna have the love, you're not gonna grow in love without the truth. And it's the truth that needs to come out. So all these preachers saying, you know, bear test you know, give you worship Jesus, they're they're being hypocrites, they're breaking the first commandment and they're telling other people to do it. It's not gonna be good for them. It's wrong. And these people, they believe that every word in the Bible is God's word. I mean, it's in English for a start. The translator themselves would have had to have understood everything fully. And if they didn't understand it, they're going to translate it wrong. And the Romans practically created the New Testament 300 years after Jesus died. You know, they like wine. So they stick wine in there. They got to make Jesus out to be a bit more special than he was. So they make him walk on water and turn water into wine when he wouldn't have even drunk wine. So things have been embellished and you've been deceived. There is no single source of truth out there written down. No one. I am the person with the most truth. Because I feel it, and I'm feeling it from God. Now, you may believe oh, some other spirit is leading me. How about Lucifer? I've come across Lucifer. You'll know it's Lucifer when you see light 
but you don't see the source of light. So you see as though the light is shining on a wall and his presence is nice. But he will make you believe that you're God. That belief will come onto you because that's the belief he's got. And the more people who believe that, that gives him something to carry on doing it. And Lucifer is still doing it. So don't believe that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it might be nice for you. You might be able to get things that you want. But you're not working for God then. You're not working for the true mother and father who don't have a physical body to talk. If you think you've heard the word of God, maybe you have felt what God said to you and then you've used your own voice to turn it into words. So if you've heard a voice saying to you something, it's definitely not God. It may be a good spirit working on behalf of God trying to get you a message, but it's not God. And there's every chance that it's a dark spirit. So at some stage, some of the humans wanted to wage a war on God. And they're still doing it. There's a lot that have turned. On a spirit level, spirit level, <laughs> on a spiritual level, <laughs> it's getting better. It is. We're sorting things out. But still, the humans left on this planet right now, in your physical form, you are deceived, and even if there are no more spirits guiding you anymore, or not many, you're still doing what you thought you should carry on doing. I am getting, um, maybe I'm just having a bit of a low patch. I mean, last the last week or so I've been, I believe I've been removing the generational sin from the DNA of man. And um, there's still more to do. But I do do go out and look for if other people are kind of progressing. And I don't know, I'm not I'm not seeing it. I feel it's like a impossible impossible to break through. And um, it would have been nice if A.J. Miller was perfect. You know, originally I thought he was, but when I've felt the truth myself and I've thought about some of the things he's said, I found out that he's not 100%. And he's actually getting stuff from me. He has been for the last, yeah, 18 months or so. Because he, he really hadn't come up with much new stuff after, between 2008 and 2012, he was saying pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, and then we saw some, some videos they'd made back in 2013, I think, but they didn't upload it until 2015, and he was saying some weird stuff, just not making sense at all. And then he did another seminar in 2014, was saying the same stuff that he's been saying since 2008, 2012. Not changed hardly anything, apart from how many spheres there are. And then um, I come along, September 2014, I take on his truths, I start working with them. And they're working, the core ones, but I'm seeing the truths on the outer edge aren't actually working they're not true and namely you know gay souls 
it doesn't exist is used this curve but that doesn't apply to things on the soul level and um, you know about human history being more like 150,000 years and talking that spirits have been in the hells for thousands and thousands and thousands of years well it's not true because we've only been here 6,000 years Another thing that pissed me off, because I suppose I am getting to the point where I'm getting a bit pissed off. Pissed off with all the attempts at falsity. I was watching um, Morgan Freeman last year did uh, a TV series called The Story of God. And um, it's, it's good and, it, and it's sort of, you know, looking like it's bending towards God and everything. But he visits these archaeological sites. And this archaeology, you know, you don't normally find everything nice and pristine and white and look like it's been made out of plaster of Paris. And they're brushing it away and it's saying things like the Mayans, you know, there's got this Mayan stone which looks like it's been made out of plaster of Paris, you know, a few months ago. And that's saying, yeah, no, the cycle doesn't end, it keeps going on and on and on. And then you've got this one in Turkey, which is supposedly showing that um, humans were, and this claims to be 9,000 years old, that humans were um, burying their dead within little holes within their own house. And this whole, the whole, and they got these T-shaped stones, they reckon. It looks so fake. It looks like it's been made out of plaster of Paris a couple of weeks ago. And the archaeologist, this would be a major, major thing. And the, the head archaeologist there, you could tell he was just a, you know, like someone who just, just is just so into their own facade. He's not a wise person. A fool. So this is another thing that's pissing me off. It's like... People are being foolish, fools, and it's not being picked up. Fools are not detecting the fools, and the blind are still leading the blind. And it's, it is beginning to piss me off a bit, I'm feeling. So anyway, so they're claiming that people were, be, you know, burying and putting, they had some bullhorns and in there. And, and they're, f because there are fuckers out there who do know the f full truth. They've known the truth since the beginning. It's been passed over, but the majority are left out of that loop. It's a small loop, and they're trying to keep us off that loop. They don't want us to know the truth. So these fake archaeological sites claiming they're about 9,000 years old. Yeah, we did carbon dating. And no one would put a dead body in their own house. It would stink. And they're saying, oh yes, and they got them out now and then. You can see what they're doing. They're trying to create a missing link. But the truth is, and what they have hidden as well, giant's bones, because the first people, the ones who lived for 900 years, were bigger as well. So their remains have remained, and they've been found, and they've been hidden. And then they put in this other thing, 9,000 years old. So they're trying to create this sort of time when humans were changing from, you know, fruit eating, swinging through the trees to starting to create civilization. It's just wrong. And the thing is, your belief is so important. Your belief affects your neighbor's belief. You have your belief around you and it and it affects the other people's beliefs around you. So you get all these people believing the wrong thing, and it's like, carries it on, makes it stronger, keeps it in, because, oh yeah, he believes it as well, so, you know, we're in the same belief. And then, if you're in the same belief with someone, you're like in the same club, in the same gang, you know, you're pals. So then anyone's got a different belief is outcast. You know, like me. Like, I am outcast. But guess what? I'm the one with the answers. <laughs> and it is frustrating, believe me, it is. 
And yes, I doubt myself sometimes. I'm in a kind of period of doubt at the moment, which is probably why my frustration is showing. Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I suppose, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping to infect others with my belief and let them feel what I'm feeling. But it's so difficult because there's so many people against it. And why would you believe me? I, you know, I got bald hair and uh, not very nice teeth, and I got massive beard, and you know, which always my moustache always getting in my freaking way. <laughs> but I know what's important. What's in here is important in your soul. That's what's important. See, my son. Why are you calling me? Is I know you know I'm doing a video. Maybe he wasn't calling me, maybe that was my imagination. But it has even been, my son, you know. And he knows more than most because I've just told him everything. But of course he's affected by all the outside things too. And he's only young and impressionable and why would he believe me, right? But yeah, quite often I've, been, I've just sat down because he's happy playing, why should I affect him? And I've just sat here and I'm um, getting into something good and they're, Dad! <laughs> so it stops me. But anyway. I do it when he's not here. That's when I really get down into my soul and I'm feeling God and I'm understanding the truth. And yeah, I'm probably just impatient as well. You know, I'm wanting something to happen. I'm wanting some confirmation. And the guy I did the Skype chat with, it, we were supposed to have another chat on Wednesday, but um, he fleeced on me, chickened out for whatever reason. But I was, because in the, you know, when he was talking to me, he clearly doesn't believe that I'm the seventh Christ. You know, you, if you watched it, you could hear when I said, and it was just a quick, yep, yeah, you know, let's get on with something else. And he really just wants to get into intellectual conversation about other things, and he likes intellectual conversations. Fair enough, right? But so... Yeah, so in a sense, yes, I'm wanting someone else to go, yeah, yeah, I believe you, but feel, to feel the truth. I want somebody else to feel that truth. Of course I do. And anyway, but it was what was weird, and then suddenly he sends me a message saying, okay, I do believe in you. And I wasn't asking him to say he believes in me, say believe me, but then I was like, oh. That's weird. <laughs> uh, so wasn't expecting that, and and maybe you know that I found that more confronting than anything. He didn't actually put it in a way that made it sound very believable. I'm yet to speak to him. Maybe we'll speak on Sunday. We'll see. <sighs> so you know, and and. People, Buddhists, monks, people who sit there praying, Indi you know, in India there's a lot of them. You know, your belief system is at the core of it. And, and they do quite well in, in matters of love and to be loving. But they leave God out of it. They don't, they don't know our mother and father. And all those people who believe in the Bible only, but they, don't believe in the mother. So you're, you're leaving half of God out. <sighs> it's down to the people with physical bodies. And if what I'm doing at the moment is right, you will have no excuse. You will have no generational injuries excuse. I don't know. I've started to deal with some of it. I don't know the order. I could guess at the moment, this moment. I could guess that it's the more recent stuff first, and then we'll get into Lamech's sin, Cain's sin, and Adam's sin. But I did think about Adam's sin, and. Original sin, I see, I think God would have created Adam and Eve as babies. 
They would have just been babies. And clearly wouldn't have needed a breast. But you can imagine like a... a lying on the forest floor, God had made a, a pod of liquid or something. And there's growing in their fetus and a uterus and then break out and their babies and they, they grow up. So what's going to happen to adolescence? Adolescence is when they're going to notice that they're naked. And they start getting urges for each other. And, th and that must have felt really good. Really good. And the sin was, whether they ate an apple or not, or that's some sort of, well, I know about the snake and the apple, I don't want to just make something up off of the foot. So what, but they left God, they made that original sin. They didn't need God. They felt like they didn't need God. Maybe that's when, when they first had a child and they thought, oh, now we're gods. Maybe that was their thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought of the other day. So, they start to think they're gods. And then they think they don't need their god anymore. Instead of thinking their god is the god of all of them there, they start thinking, oh, now we're gods. So I haven't, I don't think I've, don't think, see, it's not me doing it. I'm just being a vessel. And it's God who's deciding when, when this should be done. And um, it first happened last year. And because I've been meditating, you know, eight hours on a trot, right? And then suddenly, no reason I knew, suddenly start feeling like my feet are burning. Now, this hadn't happened to me before. Uh, just recently... I didn't at the time, but just recently I had a look on the internet to see if other people meditate and get this. And, you know, someone, there were a couple, like not many, and some people trying to give advice how to sort this problem and possibly poor circulation. And that was kind of at the time last year, that would have been the sort of the most probable thing I would have thought of. And I just want to say quickly, you know, if you believe what's probable, you're not going to know the truth. You may get it right sometimes. But remember Sherlock Holmes, you know, he did not do that, did he? He said, no, no matter how improbable, if you've eliminated every other possibility, the one remaining must be the truth. <coughs> so this stopped me in my meditation last year, feeling my feet burning. Because I couldn't hack it. And um, I'd have to stop meditating so you know, it would come and go a bit throughout the year and and then I think it was a few months ago two or three months ago that I started to think this was a gift because of something uh, Sadhu Saram Savredi I can't remember his name now uh, Indian guy orange cloak does nice talks very funny guy he was saying about God thrown down the gifts and so I was thinking oh, you know some of these is a gift and when I thought it was a gift I could actually start feeling it and then I got this lovely feeling you know in the core of my soul so I thought well I'm feeling that must be right and it was kind of going on and I wasn't really getting a sense of what the gifts were and just recently in the last few weeks I actually started to think this is not just a gift for me but this is a gift for the world and this is what God, part of God's plan is to now start removing all the generational injuries that we carry in our DNA. Because um, in meditation I've gone into a lot of stuff about you know our DNA, all water is connected on some uh, quantum level and we're made mostly of water but also you know but our DNA I do feel like there's this sort of there is a connection and then there's this sense why why God would have a Christ because God doesn't have a spirit or physical body of its own apart from all the animals 
but they don't have a soul in them. So this is why God would have a Christ uh, to speed up the process of this plan, which would may take 60,000 years without using Christ's. And now as every thousand years a Christ has come down to speed up the process. So even that was, you know, to make humans decline further, maybe with Krishna uh, talking um, thingy into going into war. And now the Christ, since uh, Yeshua, has been uh, raising this up, basically. But remember in Yeshua's time, like, no one thought, well, not many people thought he was particularly special, you know, especially not in the high places. You know, and it wasn't probably that much of a big deal. Oh, some bloke talking, you know, we've seen this before, you know, doing some healing. Well, you know, that probably happened before. Uh, Elijah brought someone back from the dead, right? But it's over time how how what he did and what he said and, you know, he certainly changed the world. And it wasn't all good because it's been picked up by people who want to use it to control people. And so lies have been added to it. And now you've got people making videos saying, yes, every single word in the Bible is the word of God. Blah, 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 blah. And Jesus was the architect and all this bullshit. Because it is bullshit. The one with God's word at the moment is me. And there's it verse John 5.43, you will accept him when he comes in the name of another, but when he comes in the Father's name, you will not accept him. So, scripture's good for putting down the people who use scripture. It's, you know, we've got a brain, we're supposed to use it. We need to use our discernment, and you need to use it when you're listening to me, and I don't want you to just listen to me and say, well, I'm going to believe that. I want you to feel Start to feel, get sincere, get real, be honest. You're going to need faith. But if you're a truth seeker, seek. Seek it. And what we are and what God is are the most important truths. So, anyway, it's, um, it is getting better. I'm just getting a bit frustrated and I felt like having a bit of a rant. So um, I think that will do. Managed to get a few points in there. Probably haven't finished what I was on at the point. Don't drink wine. Don't drink alcohol. It just makes you dumb. You can't think when you drink. Well, it takes the pain away of it. Drink, sort of, yeah, I'm pissed, you know, and you might be funny when you're drunk and, you know, do things that you think are funny and so you look back and you think, yeah, I had a good time. Drinking is stupid. Smoking cannabis is brilliant. It, it makes you feel your soul. Get connected with your higher self. That's the bit you need to feel. And you will feel it will be like a big knot. Because you haven't been there. You haven't been doing things that are good for your soul. And tobacco too. Tobacco, I think tobacco, like, shuts kind of the spirit level out a bit. I think that's what tobacco does. As well as protect your lungs from pollution. Because uh, it was a little while ago, I thought Gabriel came to tell me he was like he was going to help me give up smoking. I remember seeing little Gabriel, and because now I believe that those four main angels are aspects of God; they're not people. But so while I so then I didn't smoke tobacco and I had some weed just in a pipe or whatever. And I could I could hear voices talking constantly. Other people's voice. My granddad's was in there. There's other people's. I could see visions. It was great in a way. But while I was there, I was thinking, hang on a minute. I'm not, I'm not getting in and feeling my soul as I usually can. I'm not getting in and feeling God as I usually can. So 
you know, don't think I'm, don't now think, oh yeah, you smoke tobacco, you think you feel God, right? Well, maybe true, but a lot of people smoke and not, you know, I don't hear them all saying this. But what I think it does is it quietens down that realm. And I was saying to Dara, you know, I feel like I've skipped that realm. And I've just gone straight into the feeling. So we've got physical world, spiritual world, and then where the souls exist. That is the dominant dimension. That is the one that will continue when these other two dimensions aren't needed anymore. And our souls will be in a state where we can make our own dimension. We can have a bit of fun there. And one day we'll probably do it for real with uh, infinite souls to bring up. But obviously we're not there yet. You ain't going to know it until you feel it. And of course, you can get more than one feeling. When I first started listening to AJ Miller, the first thing I thought, because I, I am this way, the first thing I thought was, oh no, am I a, am I a, a spirit who's, who's taken over this body for the last, as long as I can remember? Ha! <laughs> That was my, you know, I wanted to check first that I wasn't the worst of the worst before I thought anything else. And then because I'd already known, you know, if you feel something, then it's true. Well, I felt something, but it was like my face being pulled off. But then there was this little, <clears throat> does that mean it's true because I felt something? So there are many, many different feelings and there's more information in the feelings. But, like, if you feel something in your core, in your heart, here, the heart of your soul, that's the power, that's where your power is. And I had, I've only recently got into that. I've been feeling loads of stuff in my head, first of all. And then was able, with humility, to allow things into my heart. And then I realised I've only done half the job. Because Mother God's from beneath. And I'd, underneath my soul, I had all these emotions. Things I haven't felt. Things I've put away and suppressed. I had to feel all those. And then I'd get my connection with Mother God. And then I had this stuff in my feet. That's what I'm, so I'm carrying on now. And, you know, so then, for my first... So, again, my first thought in a sense was, um, well, legs, they're not really part of your soul, are they? So... Just ignore it, right? And I could kind of, I could kind of ignore it for a bit and just think about my soul, and my soul felt good. Mm -hmm. But then when I got it recently, thinking it was a gift, and I accept this gift, and I suddenly got this lovely feeling. And then I've developed it because I don't, for a while, I was thinking, well, I'm not really getting a sense of what the gift is. The gift is to the everybody. The gift is to the world. Removing the sin. The sin that you're not guilty of. And it's happening. This is happening. But, you know, people putting out the wrong truth, you're not helping. Heed the truth. And the truth is here on this channel. And the core truths that A.J. Miller's come up with, they're true. And some of the Bible is true. And some of it isn't. And it will be the same in every religion. Every single religion. No book out there with just truth. Use your discernment. God's plan, God has done this. God is now taking away the generational sin, which you shed when you go to sleep, you don't have it, and you shed when you die, you don't have it. It's only while you're living on earth, it's only while you're doing the things you're doing on earth. And it hasn't helped, and we've complained about it, any of us who have found out about it have thought, wow, that's so bad, but it's going to go. I don't think it's all gone yet. 
And I don't know how long it takes to manifest. When I do it, it may take a while to manifest. Okay, that's it. Okay, worship God only. Careful what words you use. Who do you think our man is? Our man is someone that wants a lot of praise and their people are in church and oh amen and people on the internet, amen. You're just giving homage to some geezer and not God. Okay, so you're doing it in ignorance. But now you've heard it, now you're not doing it in ignorance anymore. And what the word Jesus, Jesus, Zeus, Roman God, Romans made the religion, fucking idiots. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> but, see I'm not faking, it's just something that is starting to well up. My friend keeps saying when he comes back he'll come as a lion. <laughs> Well, it's your souls God loves. Don't love your own bodies. Not until you cleanse them. Love your soul. Love yourself. And you're, other, you're connected. You're only half a soul anyway. The other half of your eternal being is your soul mate or twin flame. There's only one of them. And it'll be the opposite sex. Unless... There's a male soul in a female body. But I don't think so. I don't think God makes those mistakes at the beginning. Unless science has been fucking with the genes. And they're fucking with the genes now. We should boycott these things. Refuse to work in your workplace if there's a single thing wrong with it. If you're an arms dealer and you work for an arms dealing company, do you think you have to? Because you don't trust God will look after you? Leave your job! Bye.